Japanese archipelago, 20 years in the future. Canine saturation has reached epidemic proportions. An outbreak of dog flu rips through the city of Megasaki. Mayor Kobayashi issues emergency orders, calling for a hasty quarantine. Trash Island becomes an exiled colony. The Isle of Dogs. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly the same here. Words out of my mouth. Nobody's giving up around here, and don't you forget it, ever. You're Rex. You're King. You're Duke. You're Boss. I'm Chief. We're a pack of scary, indestructible alpha dogs. Welcome back to Bandwagon Fans. I'm Jeff, and I'm going to be talking about Wes Anderson's latest movie, Isle of Dogs. So Isle of Dogs is a stop-motion animated uh, feature film. Okay. There goes Ernie and the Porg back there. You know, I'm just going to bring the Porg up here with me. He's been, he gets a rough here, so. He's just going to show, he's just going to show with me for this one. Um, all right, so, all right, you can stop now. Shut up. Stop. Thank you. So, Wes Anderson's latest movie, Isle of Dogs. This is a stop motion animated with some 2D animation um, set in Japan. So th the movie starts off with, um, it goes back in Japan, a fictional story from Japan's history in which a ruling family is, who uh, a ruling dog hating family is betrayed and by, by a child uh, who loves dogs. And so he betrays his family, and now dogs are free to roam Japan. Um, so that's kind of the, the prelude to this whole to this whole story. Cut forward to I think it's twenty years in Japan's future, and now uh, the same family, the Kobayashi family, is now the mayor of this of this fictional city in Japan, and which is now um, has you know dogs. People own dogs everywhere. There's, you know, dogs are part of their society, uh, but this family still hates dogs. And there's a disease that is ravaging the dog community. So Kobayashi, the mayor of this city, decrees that all dogs will be rounded up and sent out of the city to the Isle of Dogs. Uh, the rest of the movie is all about the um, a boy who owned one of these dogs going to the Isle of Dogs where and all the dogs that are there trying to get back to the city to overthrow this mayor and reclaim dogs rightful place within Japanese this fictional Japanese society so that's kind of that's kind of the set up the story of the of the whole movie um, some of the things that really work with this movie the, the the cast itself is phenomenal. You have uh, Scarlett Johansson, Brian Cranston, Bill Murray, uh, Harvey Keitel, Ken Watanabe. Uh, this is a this is an impressive cast of of voice actors, established established actors, established voice actors. Francis McDormand, um, Edward Norton. It's just the cast is just massive, and it, massive and and, and a list on both from both sides of the Pacific. So a really impressive cast. The animation is just draw-droppingly gorgeous. Uh, this is, I've never seen stop motion animation done this incredibly well, this with this much attention to detail. Uh, even, even when it cuts away from the 3D stop motion animation, when it goes to 2D animation, it was still incredibly interesting, incredibly gorgeous. Um, some of the 2D animation reminded me of like World War II style tattoo art or trash polka art uh, come to life. So visually, the movie was was amazing from start to finish. And then, like I said, the cast was amazing. Unfortunately, um, the way Wes Anderson directs actors didn't necessarily work for this movie. So, you know, I, I went and saw the movie with a friend and she fell asleep twice in the movie partially because Wes, everybody in a Wes Anderson movie talks as if nothing is happening, no matter what is happening. And in with this style of animation, it kind of just kind of lulls you to sleep. 
So there was there was that aspect. That's not the movie is still salvageable despite that. It, it was still gorgeous to look at. It was it still had you know um, some really interesting things going on. But overall, the movie was incredibly problematic for me. And leaving the theater, I didn't know what I didn't know what I felt about it or what I thought. And I I actually saw this like I think four four days ago. And I just really needed to ruminate on um, what I had actually seen. So s s typically, now that I now that I'm doing these movie reviews, I try to I try to strike a balance between learning enough about a movie so that I can talk intelligently about it, and I don't, you know, for example, uh, completely miss the fact that the entire movie was filmed on an iPhone. Um, but also not not reading so much that my opinions are unduly influenced by other reviewers. So I don't, now that I'm actually doing reviews, I don't watch any reviews on YouTube. I don't read any reviews until after I've filmed mine. For Isle of Dogs, I made an exception to this. Because I knew, I knew walking out of the theater that I was missing something. I was missing a big chunk of what the movie was doing. So I, I went back and did some research. Um, before seeing the movie, I did catch one headline. And the, and the headline was, what it's like to view Isle of Dogs as a Japanese speaker. Unfortunately, I did not read the entire article before the movie. I just saw the headline. And that primed me going in the movie to be thinking that it was there was something offensive about the movie. So I was watching it from that guise of, of expecting it to be offensive, particularly in this case towards Japanese. And you'll, you, for, you may have seen some headlines or some people talk about the nature of cultural appropriation. Uh, this is Wes Anderson is a very Caucasian film director. And the movie Isle of Dogs is Japanese as, like, it is over the top Japanese. To the point where it's easy, it would be easy to view it as a caricature uh, and a rather offensive caricature of Japanese people and Japanese culture. And that's watching the movie. That's what it felt like to me. It felt like somebody was just. Um, it felt like uh, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the the actor's name from uh, Breakfast and Tiffany's, but um, that that level of uh, of uh, of a caricature of of, an, of of Japanese people. So this brings me up to uh, kind of one of my one of my theses is when it comes to art, um, particularly. Believe it or not, at one point I used to do stand up comedy. Uh, was not very good at it, but I did try it. And one of my one of my theses in doing stand up comedy was you can kind of judge whether or not something is acceptably offensive or inacceptably in offensive by looking at the relationship between the person speaking, the audience, and the subject of what is being said. So for so if you have a if you have a comedian who's telling a joke and the comedian is telling a joke about say just you know I'm just gonna black people. If it's a, and so you have the, the person telling the joke, you have the audience listening to the joke, and then you have the subject, and this, in this example would be black people, you got to go back and look. So who is the person telling the joke? If it's Richard Pryor telling a joke about black people at the Apollo, it's probably not offensive to that to the, the the subject of the the subject of the joke isn't necessarily offensive because it's it's inclusive the su the butt of the joke the subject of the joke is in is in on the joke whereas if it's um say me telling a joke about black people in mobile alabama to an all-white audience well now the subject of the joke isn't part of the joke, not part of the speaker, not part of the audience. So that's where, for me personally, it crosses a line to not be acceptable. So the question is, in watching Isle of Dogs, and, and what I wasn't able to answer while I was watching it is, 
where do where do Japanese people actually fit in the relationship of this movie? Is this is this exclus is this excluding Japanese? Is it talking about Japanese people by excluding them, or does it is it actually inclusive of Japanese people? And after doing some research afterwards, you know, I I, I think it's safe to say, watching the movie, it was there was no question in my mind that this was just ridiculously offensive and t mocking Japanese people. Doing some research afterwards, I, I'm somewhat happy to say that I was completely wrong. Um, it, it clearly was done, number one, one of, so besides, uh, besides Wes Anderson, the other, one of the other writers of the screenplay is Konichi uh, Nomura. Um, and, and you can clearly see his influence throughout some things that, so going back to, going back to my thesis, you have the speaker, you have the audience, you have the subject of the joke, or in this case, the film. My interpretation was that Japan, the Japanese were excluded from this relationship. In reality, J Japanese culture was very represented both as the speaker because uh, Konichi was one of the writers, and they are very much part of the audience. There are things in this movie that we're gonna are, went over my head because I'm not familiar with Japanese culture, like the detail, any kind of details of Japanese culture. But there were things that um, Japanese natives, people who live in Japan, are going to get. And they're going to laugh at because they're like, yeah, you know, little, little details like the shape of a chocolate milk bottle or the way a newscaster introduces a segment. All those things completely are over my head because I'm not, I'm not there. I don't live in Japan. But from, from the things I read... Japanese people in Japan are absolutely going to get this movie was written from their perspective and with them in mind. So that whole aspect of it for me is like, okay. And I kind of wish I, I kind of wish I had known that going in, I, I definitely would have viewed it differently. One of the themes in the movie. Um, so it does something really interesting with language the entire movie is spoken in Japanese, except for, except with, with some exceptions. Um, all the dogs, and there's a little tag, there's a little intro in the beginning where it explains the translation process. All the dialogue said by dogs, it said, will be translated in English. So, so we could hear, we were able to understand everything they were saying. Japanese people throughout the movie spoke in Japanese, except for, um, a bilingual newscaster who would who was translating some things and a, an exchange student and what so after watching the movie you know I and doing doing my research it, somebody pointed out that one of the central themes is the very nature of translation and language and the movie kept and looking back on it I can see what they were talking about because the movie kept switching translation types so sometimes it would have um, subtitles. Sometimes it wouldn't have subtitles. Sometimes the subtitles would be in little text boxes pointing to something on the screen. Sometimes uh, there'd be a character translating. Sometimes there wouldn't be. So clearly one of the central themes of I Love Dogs is the nature of translation and what gets lost in translation and how there is no right way to do translations. Um, so all that is is a really interesting topic to explore, and I again I kind of wish I had I kind of wish I had thought of this earlier on in the movie so it would have I think I would have had a better appreciation of it, and and this leads me to one of the one of the central criticisms I have of Olive Dogs and also one of the central um, you know I'm going to say perk for lack of a better word or, or one of the positives of the movie. It is a very engaging movie. Even even though it wasn't particularly engaging while I was watching it, but I haven't stopped thinking about it for three or four days. So uh, I think as I as I was leave, as I was leaving the theater, I was reminded of Mother, which had the same effect on a lot of people, liked it or hate it. It made people think about stuff, um, and Isle of Dogs definitely does that. It makes it made me think about 
it really made it just made me think in general of what was what Wes Anderson was trying to say. Um, now I wanna I'm gonna talk a little bit about cultural appropriation in general. So cultural appropriation. So one of the one of the things that I've noticed some people criticizing about Isle of Dogs is the cultural appropriation. Now I've already talked a little bit about how it really. It, he, Wes Anderson really went to great pains to be respectful of the culture, even while it looked like it was a caricature. Uh, and it was done from a Japanese perspective to with a Japanese audience in mind. But that doesn't mean we can't use this as a, as a launch point for, the, for a discussion about cultural appropriation in general. Now, I tend to be pretty far left on the political spectrum. Uh, my degree is in anthropology, so most of the people who think like me reject uh, or are guarded against cultural appropriation and lean towards cultural preservation. I actually go complete, the complete opposite. Uh, I believe that cultural appropriation is, going back to my earlier thesis, there's, you should still be respectful and in Anytime you're borrowing something from another culture, you should try to include those people in what you're saying. But for thousands, tens of thousands of years, culture has been evolving, and it evolves largely by people from different cultures intermingling. We talk to each other, we share ideas, we borrow ideas, we borrow words, we have sex with each other, we make new uh, multicultural, multiracial babies. And that's how we progress as a species and how we maintain some kind of unity as a species. So to me, the idea of walling somebody off and saying this is a culture and it has to be segregated and preserved from other cultures is, to me, it's as ridiculous as saying this racial group has to be preserved. Just let people let people intermingle and let evolution happen, whether it's cultural evolution or biological evolution, just let things take their natural course. Yes, that means that some cultures are going to die off and some cultural ideas will die off, but new ones will take their place. You know, nobody's lamenting the loss of Roman gladiators. That was a dominant, that was a dominant norm throughout much of the ancient world. We don't miss it now. Except for maybe, you know, you know, some people might want to bring it back. But, you know, the, the point is culture changes. And yes, we, we're, we're always going to lose stuff, but we're going to gain stuff as well. Um, so the idea of West, so the idea of doing a movie in America about Japanese culture in and of itself is an offensive. It could easily slip to that. And I'll be getting to I'll be getting to one thing in the movie here in just a second, but the idea but the idea that that you can't you should not be allowed to do it to me is to me is just ridiculous. Just <clears throat> do it with an open mind, do it with an open heart, and always try to maintain that re that relationship I talked about earlier, where the subject of the story you're telling is included either as the speaker or the audience, or preferably both. Um, so on a... Now with that said, there's one scene in the movie that to me was inexcusable. So Chief, the, the, main, one of the, the main protagonist in the movie, and I don't, I don't even know who voiced Chief, because I, I couldn't tell who was voicing what. But Chief, in, is in, you see in the trailers, is the black dog uh, who's kind of the leader of this pack of dogs. Except that he's not actually black. And there's a point in the movie where the kid who comes to the island to save all the dogs literally washes the black off of Chief, makes him white, and then Chief is able to achieve his, his heroic role. And for a movie that is as conscious of other cultures and other people as Isle of Dogs is, it's inexcusable to have that imagery. Uh, it's, it's, we, every once in a while, you know, if you watch like maybe Double Toasted, every once in a while they'll show a commercial where they're like, what the hell were these people thinking? And with all, with all these 
they took such great care to make sure that the Japanese people were included and were part of the were part of this creative process. Somebody should have said, "Hey, you need to rethink that image. You can't wash the black off of somebody to make them a hero. It's, that's just inexcusable." And that leads to what I think was the biggest the biggest problem with the movie is its thematic inconsistencies. So you go back to the, to the overall story of a group being all the problems of a society being scapegoated onto one group and then that group being s sent away from the larger society. I mean that that's you know it, it's an easily recognizable story whether you're talking about you know fascism or xenophobia uh, and it's something that we're we're fighting against now in 2018 are, are these themes. So in this case the the scapegoated group is these dogs but throughout the movie the dogs just want to go back to be with their masters and that that's that thematic inconsistency of are you opposing are you, are you is the movie is Wes Anderson and Isle of Dogs opposing xenophobia and trying to promote a sense of equality or is it trying to promote this idea that it's acceptable for some groups to be subjugated by another group because throughout the movie, the dogs really, they, they're just, they just mourn the loss of their masters and they just want to go back to their masters. And that's, in their mind, that is their rightful place. Well, if they're a stand-in for oppressed minority groups, are you saying oppressed minority groups want to be oppressed, but just taken care of? I don't know, but that's, I don't know what Wes Anderson was trying to say or if he was even thinking along those lines, but those that's the Im that's the imagery that was presented. And so that aspect of it was probably the most troubling for me. Um, I mean, overall, like I, like I said in the beginning, this was a beautiful movie. It probably would have worked better as a short film the, the, because it did kind of drag for a while and he might have been able to tighten up some of those, some of those themes. Um, what it isn't, this is not a movie about a boy and his dog. I, I, I saw a couple of headlines and maybe, it should, maybe I should have read the entire article, but you know, a couple of headlines were like, hey, a movie about a boy and his love for his dogs. And, you know, and it's like, you know, that is not what this movie, that is a thing in this movie, but it is not what Isle of Dogs is about, not at all. Um, but anyways, uh, I think I've been rambling on for, for quite a bit here. Um, <clears throat> a really interesting movie. I don't, I don't know if I liked it, but I'm definitely probably going to watch it again. And it's, it's, I, I think I said at one point, it's more interesting to talk about this movie than maybe it was actually watching it. But that's, that's something. Overall, I'm going to give this movie, I don't know if a rating really matters for this movie or not, but I'm going to give it, I think I'm going to give it three stars out of five um, and I'm, I'm kind of being generous on it but any movie that sparks this much thought and discussion is worth something even if even if to me it failed on, on many levels but th so this movie has been out now I'm filming this middle of April it's been out for over a month now it just hit Tucson a couple weeks ago uh, I don't think too many people have actually seen this movie yet so if you have you know, leave your comments below, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. You know, maybe maybe wait for it to come out on rental, but check it out. It is it is worth it is worth watching, and watch it with a group of people, and you know, try to spark it as plan like a dinner afterwards so you can talk about it. It is interesting. It is beautiful. I'm looking forward to seeing where this technology goes in the future. Just uh, thematically, it was thematically problematic in some in some cases for me. So. Anyways, thanks for watching. For those of you that stuck through this whole, this is kind of a long video. For all of you that stuck through the whole to the end, thank you. Uh, once again, I'm Jeff, and get on the bandwagon.